transistors, 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 transistors into a chip the size of your fingertip. Hello guys, I hope you all are doing great. In this video, I will review my MacBook Pro 16 on the M1 Pro processor one year later. I will try to help those of you who are thinking about buying one of these machines in 2023. I will show you all its quirks and features and I will give you my honest opinion about this computer after almost one year of usage. I will also try to answer the question, should you still consider buying it right now or the M2 Pro model that was recently released. If you want to support me, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tech-oriented content. Without losing more of your time, let's go straight to the topic of this video. So for me, the M2 Pro models are more like an S year for iPhones. You know, it's like the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6. Basically, it is the same model, but just a little bit improved version. And if we're talking about the new MacBook Pro, the only difference is the processor. All the other components are literally the same. Screen, resolution, screen brightness, materials, keyboard, colors, trackpad. I think Apple is the only company in the world that can sell the same computer for several years in a row, asking for more money every year. The M2 Pro model is actually more expensive than M1 Pro model, in the same configuration. For example, I paid for my M1 Pro 1TB SSD 16-inch MacBook Pro 2,899 euros. The exact same model costs now 3,299 euros, so huge jump in price, but no so huge jump in performance. Obviously, the M2 is better, but they just added two additional cores. I don't think I will be able to feel it in my day-to-day -day life or even when exporting in 4K my YouTube videos. So let's talk about my MacBook 16 inches after one year of usage. Guys, I still think that this is the best MacBook Pro ever made by Apple. While being relatively expensive, I still consider this machine as a good value product. It has the best Liquid Retina HDR display in the world, it has the best trackpad on the market. The M1 Pro processor is more than enough for any hard task to handle like video editing or coding. The overall user experience is very very pleasant. It is well built with aluminum and very comfortable new keyboard. It has plenty of ports, 3 USB Thunderbolt connectors and even an HDMI port. Also, as you probably know, this generation of MacBooks Pro reintroduced MagSafe, so you can charge your computer both from a USB Type-C cable or using MagSafe. Regarding the connectivity, even if the MacBook Pro 16 has three USB-C connectors, you still need a dongle. For example, if you want to connect several hard drives for doing backup, external SSD or even charging your iPhone or Apple Watch, you can quickly run out of ports. If you need a new USB-C hub for your new MacBook Pro, you can check out this inexpensive third-party manufacturer called Mini Sapporo. It's just $40 on Amazon and it adds 5 extra USB-C ports. It supports power delivery up to 100 watts and high-speed data transfer. For example, I'm using this little dongle to connect all my peripherals into one USB-C port to my MacBook. It's super handy because if I want to disconnect it from my computer, I have to disconnect just one cable and not five of them. I will leave a link for this product in the description of this video, so check it out if you're interested. And thanks to this new brand for sponsoring this video. So time for the answer. Should you buy the M1 Pro or the M2 Pro model? If you already have an M1 Pro MacBook, you should not update to this new model. It is the same computer, just a little bit more powerful. If you will purchase it, you won't feel the difference anyway. So what's the point of spending your money twice? If you have an old Intel-based MacBook, of course you can consider purchasing the M2 Pro model. But if you want to save some money, try to look for M1 Pro model, either the 16-inch or 14-inch model. It will be almost as good as the M2 Pro, but way less expensive. And if you're gonna look for the M1 Pro used models, you can find really good deals. If today I would need to buy a new MacBook, 
I would definitely purchase the M1 Pro 16 inch model. I mean, it's just more affordable and offers the same design and features, and I would even say the same architecture processor, because for me, the M1 Pro is still very, very good. The M2 Pro has just two extra cores. Basically, that's all. The M1 Pro chip will be supported for many, many years, so you can still buy the M1 Pro model and be totally confident about macOS support for at least five years. Again, if your budget is not limited, of course, go for it. You can take the latest and greatest M2 Pro model or even M2 Max model, but don't expect it to be better than your friend's M1 Pro model. Probably side by side, you will have the same performance more or less. So don't expect to beat all of your friends and colleagues with your brand new M2 Pro model. Should you buy the 14 inch or the 16 inch model? For me, this question is very important. I would definitely advise you to get the 16 inch model. It's so much better because it offers you more screen and more battery life on a single charge. Obviously, it is not as portable as 14 inch model, but I think it is better in all senses. Trust me, when you will try using the 16 inch model, you will love it and you will never be able to use the small 13 or 14 inch model. But be aware that the 16 inch model is more expensive. The price difference is not so huge though. If you prefer performance over size and comfort of usage, then you can invest extra money into the M1 Max or M2 Max chip and getting 14 inch model instead. Anyway, you got my point of view. If you want to see the unboxing of my M1 Pro 16 inch model, the link will be in the description. Recently, I also made a video about the top 10 apps that will make your macOS experience way better. I will put a link for this video in the description as well. And lastly, for those of you who are interested in having more battery life, I made a video about charging tips for MacBook Pro 16 using a little portable battery. Working outside using this little tip will change your life forever. As you probably guessed, the link will be in the description. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tech-oriented content. Don't forget to check out my other videos on my channel as well. See you later on YouTube. Bye-bye.